Hello guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel Being Engineer. In my previous lecture, I have discussed about the moment of inertia which is the most important topic of mechanics of structure. In this video, we are going to discuss radius of gyration with examples. So you are requested to please watch the full video so to get the better understanding of the topic radius of gyration. So let's get started. Radius of gyration is defined as distance from a given reference where the whole mass or area of a body is assumed to be concentrated to give the same value of i. Now the radius of gyration is the that distance, distance from area of each particle or the area of the whole body to give the same value of moment of inertia. I is for moment of inertia. In simple terms, you can just say that how compactly or otherwise the material in the area of cross section is distributed around the center of gravity. So the, the value of radius of gyration depends upon its distance from the center of gravity. I is equal to a k square. I is the moment of inertia which I have explained in detail in my previous video. Watch that video too to get the better understanding of the topic. If we rearrange this equation for k which is radius of gyration, we will get the equation k is equal to i divided by a under the root. Now this is the formula for radius of gyration. Now why radius of gyration is important to engineers or structural engineers? Because every cross sectional shape has some properties that are measured in some units like area of any, uh, any body or a perimeter of any structure but there are several such properties that are relevant to engineers but those two like area and perimeter are easily understood by non-engineers whereas there is one property that laymen do not need to know but which is important to the structural engineer and that is radius of gyration why it is important to the engineers because it is used to compare how various structural shapes will behave under compression along the axis that is along x-axis and y-axis we need to know the behavior of structural member under compression along these two axes and it is used to predict buckling in a compression member so that's why radius of gyration is important now this is the formula of radius of gyration and there are few notations which are used in the formula of radius of gyration that for example kxx is equal to ixx divided by a under the root and kyy is equal to iyy divided by a under the root. Now, as I have discussed in my previous slide, that we need to know the behavior of a member under different axes along different axes, that is kxx and kyy. So, for to know the behavior along x-axis, we use this formula. Now, what is kxx? Kxx is the radius of gyration from x-axis whereas ixx is the moment of inertia about x-axis and kyy is equal to radius of gyration from y-axis and iyy is equal to moment of inertia about y-axis and a is the area of the figure so that was all about the formula of radius of gyration and now i'm going to explain radius of gyration with you examples first of all we take the example of a beam and the depth of these two beams are given as that is 12 inches and the depth of other beam is 15 inches. Now the depth of this beam has increased that is the distance k is moment of inertia is i is equal to a k square and this distance k has increased in this case is the depth has increased and k that is radius of gyration is directly proportional to i that is moment of inertia. As the value of k increases, the value of i also increases. That is moment of inertia. And what is moment of inertia? Moment of inertia is the measure of resistance against buckling. So this, this beam will behave differently as compared to this beam, and this the load from slab to beam tends to buckle or break the beam in the downward direction. Now in this case we have increased the distance that is depth of the beam and the radius of gyration has increased 
so so this beam will bear more load as compared to this load because its resistance against buckling has increased so let me explain it by another example the example of a solid rod in first case we have a solid rod and it is compactly squeezed around the center of around the center in which the radius of gyration is minimum but in this case if the circular pipe or you can say a rod is hollow from inside but the area is same if the area of this rod is one one square inch and the area of this rod is also one square inch but the distance that is radius of gyration along both axes has increased that is the more the radius of gyration of any cross sectional strip the more this material is scattered and the lesser the tendency of member to buckle buckle when it is compressed square and rectangular column in this case the square column has equal distances along x axis and y axis now k and r are the notations for radius of gyration just to differentiate uh, it from along x axis and y axis we name it like k for y axis and r for x axis so both the distances k and r along both axes are equal so this the behavior of the square column will be same in both axes whereas in rectangular column the behavior will be different as yes, the distance of radius of gyration has increased so as the distance from centroidal axis has increased so the behavior of rectangular column will be different under the same load so i hope you have understand the meaning of radius of gyration for more videos you are requested to please subscribe the channel and press the bell icon to get video updates